I'm going to slave him. Welcome to FM13 of FE8. This is going to be a bit of a showcasing of where insane stats on Cormag from Volney Grinding can pay off. The first thing that needs to be done is to send Dusel over to where Garrick is, uh, using Unpromoted Ford to, to bring him over. But I also have some items, some extra items on Ford to give to Garrick, like a Killing Edge as a sword that's just more accurate than the stupid steel blade he starts with. And cause, be, this is because, luckily, Garrick's strength is just good enough to one-round these enemies here with um, the Killing Edge instead of the steel blade. I don't really want to use a hand axe here, despite the fact that I still go that I still go hero, because that's not very accurate and that's just it just messes up the game plan a little bit if he misses. Whereas I can kind of do a lot with just killing stuff from one range using that positioning. Seth needs to be rescue dropped over the river like this, using Tana and Vanessa, so that he can reach the barrier village, which is in like the southwest corner of the map on turn three. And then Cormag is just going to fly pretty much in the middle of the map so that he can just face as many enemies as humanly possible while chugging a, and chugging a pure water to reduce damage from bolting, since he's very much in range of that. In order to prevent Vanessa from being attacked by the Cavaliers to near where Cormag is, we have Ephraim rescue dropped in front of her so that they just suicide on Ephraim instead. Uh, we, we needed Ford to use the Killer Lance here just to actually kill that soldier, because if he uses the Steel Lance, he gets weighed down and can't double him. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, Garrick kills that soldier, and we used Molder as our Ephraim picker-upper, because we want to get free mend opportunities with both Molder and Ardor, so we just use that formation so that each of them get attacked by a fighter. <laughs> And so that they can both heal each other on turn two and repeat the process for turn three. As you can see, yeah, Garrick barely, clean, like, cleanly two shot with the killing edge there. Uh, Tana needs to be to the left of Seth here, or like, like, needs to be in that tile to stay out of bolting range, which makes sense because if she got hit by that cavalier and bolting, she'd just die. Weirdly enough, this cavalier. I think because, you know, like, <sighs> enemies prefer to attack an enemy that is adjacent to, like, another enemy. So, like, they prefer to attack Seth because Seth was adjacent to an alive cavalier versus Franz, who was just alone. Which is kind of weird, but it happens. And yeah, that, that fighter has a hand axe, but because of the way I positioned Garrick, he's forced to suicide at one range because the cavalier is occupying the two-range spot. These guys, these archers only have iron bows, which do about like 10 damage to Cormag. It's good to dodge it, but it's definitely damage he can afford to take. As you can see, this Cormag is insanely strong. And yeah, he takes, he takes, he does take a hit from the other one. And it does nothing because his defense is comical right now. He got both Draco shields. It's nice to get rid of this Javelin Cavalier because the rest of them in that group only have one range, which means they can eventually just suicide on Ephraim. The, it's, um, having Tana to the left like that. To stay out of bolting range, made her put her in range of that javelin cavalier, which means that guy does not suicide on Seth, which is unfortunate. But luckily, because we have Ephraim here, we can just kill him on player phase. The thing that needs to be done now is to get rid of that knight so that Seth can full move. We use Dazla here to hand axe him to death. He can crit, but if he doesn't, Tana can finish him off. Tana needs to be at, like, relatively healthy for turn 3 player phase, but because she dodged the javelin, it's safe for her to attack this guy here instead of vulnerating. If Dazzla had, like, gotten the crit, though, like, we wouldn't need to worry about this. We could just vulnerate anyway, so it's pretty decent odds overall. Garrick needs to kill this cavalier on player phase, which is easy enough to do. Notice that he's not in range of that mage to the left right now. Cormag needs to kill Selena with a two-range weapon, which is why we have the short spear here, and he just one-rounds her. <laughs> which is important, because that triggers a lot of enemies to move when they otherwise wouldn't, which can help us be in their range when we otherwise wouldn't be for on turn three. Uh, because Franz would be able to kill Javelin that guy if, if need be, like that knight that Tana killed, but... It's ideal if he doesn't, because that lets Ardor get another heal 
on turn three, as you'll see next turn. But yeah, for now, they're just gonna heal each other and let the fight one of the fighters attack Mulder and the other suicide on Ardor. Seth full moves, which puts him in the range of the village. And now, uh, f I, I, I moved Ford earlier so that we could just do a quick little rescue drop with Tethys. Ford wants to stay out of that range of that mage because he would die and not counter it. So Dussel takes drops Tethys, which puts her in the place she needs to be, and he equips the hatchet so that the mage suicides on him. So now this enemy phase is a little precarious for Cormag, but luckily enemies have pretty bad hit on him overall. And also, yeah, there's that Killer Axe fighter, which could murder friends, but luckily he has a sword, so not too bad. And yeah, the fighter actually misses Mulder, which is kind of, or misses Arter, which is kind of annoying, because it means Mulder needs to find another heal target, but it is what it is. So yeah, that mercenary is a joke. He dies. And it gives us Zambada, but we want to send that away. These Cavaliers only have one range weapons, so they start moving up. But as you'll see, there's actually a way to deal with them next turn anyway. And yeah, the, these this Cavalier and these Cavaliers and Archer suicide on Seth here because they're they're very much in his range, which is perfect. And that Cavalier got pulled back towards Cormag instead of going towards Garrick and Dussel, which is helpful. He's, and that guy also, yeah. <laughs> There's not really much to say about how Cormac fares against most of the enemies, because he absolutely murders them. Tethys does survive the hand axe hit if she got hit there, but like, eh, doesn't really matter. And yeah, Seth gets the archer. And yeah, that mage, that mage is kind of annoying. He does move in the way of Seth reaching the village, but this is why we needed Tana healthy, so she can just kill it on player phase. These Luna Druids have like, sub-20 hit on Cormac, I'm pretty sure. So like... Even if they do 9 damage guaranteed, they're good luck hitting them. <laughs> good luck hitting him. But yeah, so they get one shot in return, which is nice. Not that their avoid's particularly high. But yeah, this Great Knight's kind of annoying because he uses an axe. So we need... We want to hit both short spear hits there so that we can just finish him off with one javelin hit. But in the worst case, if we just hit... Uh, yeah, in the worst case, like... Yeah, it would be a turn loss if we don't hit him there because there's not really a backup for that since no one else can be in range but it is what it is so Ephraim with his lovely water walking abilities can just be in range of all those cavaliers on the right which is nice and Tana uh can one round that mage with the iron lance pretty easily but she doesn't want to be in range of the rest of these enemies so it's Vanessa picks her up and brings her back which is just out of range of everything else Seth gets the barrier and the actually remaining movement matters here because he needs to be in range of that one of the pegs in order to do that or like you know yeah he needs to be in range of one of the pegs and that's the only way to do that i just didn't want to waste killing edge uses there but like i could have brought like a steel sword or something to kill that guy <laughs> with garrick the steel blades overkill but yeah so dusel he manages even base dusel would double that cavalier with a sword slayer because he has a steel sword so he's way down a little bit which is perfect because that's just more axe rank but in the worst case you could just like use horse slayer and that would one shot probably and yeah, so he moves just in range of that brigand, using, equipping the hatchet, and he cleanly to a KOs him. And now Franz kills this fighter so that Ardor can use his turn he healing instead of killing that guy. And so, I mean, oh yeah, because Ardor dodged, we have Mulder heal Franz instead. Mul this Mulder is, like, pretty good on magic right now, which is pretty funny. But... Yeah, and then Ardor heals Mulder, which is an extra staff piece for him, which we love to see. And now Cormac has to kill this Troubadour, which unfortunately gives him zero chances to heal. So he, he's ideally dodging as much as he can in the first two enemy phases, but he's not really in danger of anything this last one, so he could be really low and still be fine. Like that, the only enemy that damages him here is that Great Knight, which is like four with a hand axe. Ephraim, if he got hit more in the earlier turns, he could have he could have healed there, but I just didn't because he, I mean I didn't need to. And yeah, Seth takes care of the two of the pegs and the mage while Ephraim deals with these calves. Cleanly one-shotting them with Regan Leaf. We love triple effectiveness. He dodges the I mean he, he doesn't really take that much damage from them because they have swords. But like so even if he got hit, he'd be fine there. And yeah. <laughs> Gets tanked as we really want him to be. Another level up, and does he? Get, oh yeah, yeah. Luck. I mean, this Cormac kind of luck group is kind of funny. So, 
cleanly killing with the hatchet with great hit because we love the hatchet. Seth, unfortunately, is not quite strong enough to just delete people with one javelin hit like Cormac is. <laughs> and that is chapter 13 in three turns with the barrier. I will see you next time.